What's up? We are officially live. This is Mike Wall back again with another episode of your favorite podcast, The Agent Revolution Podcast, where we deconstruct some of the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agent so they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. I'm super excited today to be talking to myself. I love talking to myself because I always agree with what I have to say. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about how to simplify the hiring process. In addition to this podcast, I'll be doing a free event in Columbus on October 8th from 10 to 12. And if you're interested in registering for that event, uh, please go to 100krealtor.com. But hurry, because seating is limited and our date and event quickly sold out. All right, enough about me. Um, let's dive right in. And by the way, this is my favorite time of year. Um, it is fall in Ohio. It's like 70 degrees and we got a lot of really exciting stuff going on. Tonight, I'll be in Cleveland supporting my man, Albie Stasek, um, for the Rock and Rescue event um, and Miss Nikki Gregory for uh, Agents Act. Uh, so if, um, if you haven't gotten your ticket, I think you're out of luck at this point because the event sold out. Um, so I'm really excited. Chase Bryant um, and uh, it'll be a really good show. And then next week, uh, October 1st through the 5th, we'll be in Las Vegas for EXP Con. So just a lot of really exciting stuff happening right now. Um, but without further ado, let's uh, let's get right into the show. What I want to do, I think just real quickly, is I'm going to... Um, the reason why I wanted to do this podcast is because uh, I know hiring is, is, is proven to be such a difficult thing um, in my transition from being a real estate agent to a business owner, uh, because really you have to learn how to think differently. You have to become someone different than you were when you were just simply a real estate agent dealing with buyers and sellers. And so I wanted to do this video to hope, hopefully shed some light on those of you who are in uh in the trenches, uh, who are building a team, maybe ready for your first hire, maybe already have a team and just having challenges uh, finding the right folks. Uh, because what you're going to find is that the the epiphany that I had in my business where I, I, I I'd hi originally hired people that um, that didn't work out. It seems like mo in, in most cases, a lot of folks just didn't work out. And I was spending thousands and thousands of dollars on um, personality assessments and ad agencies and headhunters and you name it, just to find the right people. And you know, in as a real estate agent, you're you're looking for people that that will come in and fill a role for you and hopefully pay for themselves and helpful ho uh, hopefully bring new business in um, to to your organization. And you know, for it, during that transition, while you while you you know you're still selling real estate in, into becoming a business owner, it's um, you know you're thinking with a different hat on, and I think it's important that you you know you you study the right substance, you read the right books, and and in doing that, it will help you become the right person you need to be in order to find and attract talent. And the great thing about um, attracting talent. Or finding talent is that you know it, it it's really it, it, at, at its core it's about who you are as an individual and and so when you're attracting talent it's um, it's easier to do that when you have a great track record right so like talent is attracted to um, talent is attracted to other talented individuals so like if you are a if you're a top agent in your marketplace and you sell a lot of real estate and you have a good reputation, people are naturally going to be attracted to working with you. And there's a lot of great agents in our local market here in Dayton and in Cincinnati who've done a really good job of that. And um, and so that's one way. And then another way would be just to go out and find talent. And there, you know, obviously there are different ways to go out and do that. Um, you know, and there's and then there's a process that you go through. And, and um, at, at Keller Williams, we went through career visioning, and um, I think that's a great tool. And you know, and, and you want to you want to you want to constantly um, fine tune and perfect that system so that you can bring talented individuals into your organization. 
And um, because ultimately you are only going to be as good as the folks that you bring in. And uh, I think it's so important that you make good decisions about the people you bring into your organization because it will literally impact the way that your business grows and the health of your culture. And so if you, if you don't do a good job bringing in um, talented people or like-minded individuals that share your vision and your enthusiasm for real estate, then um, it will cost you, it will cost you a lot of time and it will cost you a lot of money that you will never get back. So um, for the first couple years when I was hiring people, I, I would, and, and granted, we, we didn't swing and miss every time. I have a lot of great folks who've been with us for two plus years and they are, they are rocking it out, man. And um, I'm still very grateful to, to have those folks on our team to be able to uh, provide and serve them um, at a high level. But man, I've whiffed a lot. And, um, and so this video is really for, for me to provide a platform to tell you how I did that. And one of the very simple tweaks that I made in my business um, to really, to kind of, to kind of, to, to change that overnight, so to speak, literally it, it changed it overnight. And so for you, um, I'm sure on some level that you're going through the same thing. And, you know, so I think the first couple of years in my business, when I was bringing people in is, you know, we would put, we would literally put out ads on Craigslist ads on indeed. And, um, obviously we'd use our, um, our vendor partners for recommendations. And then we would attract some people in as well. And, um, and, you know, for the first, for the first couple months while I was building a team, it was just like, you sign up everybody, right? It's like, man, I'm, I got leads. Um, if they, if, if you put a mirror under their nose and they fog it up, man, it's like you're hired. Right. And so I, I that's the way I hired people for the first uh, couple months I was in the business and quickly learned that, um, that was not an effective way to bring, um, people into the organization uh, on any level. And I would not suggest doing that for anybody. And really the reason why I did that is because I hired, um, I waited too long to hire people. I was hiring out of necessity. And so um, I was very hasty about bringing folks in. And um, so when they came in, if they had a real estate license, we signed them up and started giving them leads. It was literally the, probably one of the worst mistakes I'd ever made in my business because there was no vetting process. And, you know, you go through this evolution um, as an agent, as a business owner, where you quickly learn um, that you, 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 you can, there has to be some sort of a vetting process for the people you bring into your organization um, because they have to, they have to share your vision, your passion, your enthusiasm for the industry. And, um, you know, they have to be coachable and, and, and they have to be willing to do it your way. Um, and, and so, you know, the natural evolution for me was, you know, we bring in 10 people or we bring in five people, we keep one, you know, if we were lucky, we'd have one really good one. And then I noticed what I was doing is the, the, the people that I was hiring, um, I was all hiring based on potential. And so I was like, well, this, the, my, the, I, and I remember this, I remember like having the thought, well, this person has a lot of potential, right? And I think, you know, you, they come in, they interview well, um, you know, they're dressed nice, they're well-spoken and it's like, you know, you look at them and you want to see the best in those people and you do, you, you, and sometimes it's also, it's a, it's a, it's a false belief, right? It's, you're making up the story. Uh, for their work ethic, for their work habits, for them in, in your mind, because you want them so bad to be that person. And so you take a chance and bring them onto your, into your environment. And some of them are good. Some of them, you know, you, you, it's, it's a law of, uh, of, of, of averages, right? It's, it's a numbers game. So, you know, some of them will be good, but most of them were not. And, and when I made the switch from hiring people with potential to now only hiring people with um, with a, a proven track record, um, it was it was literally it changed the way I looked at the business. It changed the way we brought people in 
um, overnight. And so it was, um, it was just, it was, it was, um, it was a game, literally a game changer for me. And so now, you know, before we bring people in or when we bring people in on that initial interview, we're bringing them in and we're making sure that they have some sort of track record. Now, the big misconception here is that they have a track record in real estate. And that's not always the case because we're bringing in some young agents here who are newly licensed. And it doesn't always have to be a track record in real estate. But what I've learned about most talented people is somewhere in their life, they have a proven track record of success, right? So young people, maybe young people out of high school or out of college, you know, they excelled at something. Maybe it was sports and athletics. Maybe it was academics. And they're able to show you that and able to prove that. And so, you know, that is a proven track record of success. And then there's also there's, you know, there's people that come uh, to your organization from other industries, right? Like uh, we got a great guy named John Clark, right? And he was the number one salesperson for Shredded um, for, you know, for several years. And, and so these are the types of people that when you bring them in, they're able to show you, hey, I was, um, I was the number one, you know, person for X organization. And, and so it's important when you bring people in that, as, as bad as you may want to hire those people, as bad as you may need them, you might just absolutely need them. Um, it is so important that they are able to prove to you that they have some track record of, of documented success. And that if they don't, you got to take a pass. You don't bring them into your organization uh, because you really can't take a chance anymore on bringing in bad hires. Uh, because they li they literally will cost you and your business thousands of dollars, and they may potentially cost you um, some of your good people. If you bring in cancerous people or bad people into an organization, um, they may actually cost you some of your, your, your some of your, your 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 best people. And so you have to be very careful in doing that. So remember, big takeaway today: um, it seems much more simple than it actually is, but um, when you're bringing people in on an initial interview, what you're looking for now is, is, is a track record of success. Don't ever, ever hire people based on what potential you think they have. They need to be able to show you some documented proof that they've had success in their life. And you, I would, if it were me, I would not bring them in unless they can show you that. So today's lesson, remember, only hire on track record, never hire on potential. And um, I could literally, I, one, one of my favorite topics is, is talking about, you know, the hiring process because it's been such a challenge for me. Uh, and I know a lot of you out there are spending a lot of time, a lot of money trying to find the right people. But if you make that one distinction in your business, if you hire track record people and not potential people, it will be it will make a profound impact on your on on your business uh, on and in those uh, in those around you. So um, that's it for this one, guys. Um, Want to tell you one more time, I've got a free event coming up in Columbus on October 8th from 10 to 12. I'll be diving into my business. Um, how in only four years I got to 300 transactions, how to help you make a sustainable six figure income in real estate. Again, that's um that's in Columbus on October 8th. Go register right now. It's 100krealtor.com. Seating is very limited. Uh, it will sell out. The Dayton event sold out. And uh, I really hope to see you there. Um, as always, if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe to this one. Give me a five-star review. And um, if you would also do me a big favor, um, if you, if you, if you, if you want to jump on a call with me to learn more about my business uh, or if you just have questions about, you know, uh, what you can do to help grow your business, you can go to meetmikewall.com and uh, we'll jump on a 30 minute call and we can talk for free. Um, other than that, I'm going to let you guys get back to it. Hope you have a great uh, rest of your day here Thursday and uh, we'll talk soon.